Hey everyone and welcome back to another Mirage Arcane Warfare Community Diary. This week we're talking about environment art in Mirage, Sam. which is pretty awesome. Uh, before we get into that though, we've got one big announcement to go over, which is that the public testing um, arrangement for Mirage has changed a bit. We've now got a closed alpha coming in September of this year, so just next month. Um, and that will, for all intents and purposes, be what was planned for the beta all along. The closed alpha, though, will be uh, under a uh, non-disclosure agreement. Um, then we've got the closed beta coming in early 2017 with the release of Mirage planned for early 2017 as well. So you can read a full blog post about that, all the information you need on miragearcanewarfare.com. You can also sign up for the alpha and then the beta on miragearcanewarfare.com right there. Nice. So yeah, we're talking about environment art in Mirage, and today I'm joined by two wonderful artisans of environments. Uh, this is Lucas. Hi, I'm uh, Lucas Annunziata, and I'm an environment artist. And Jason. I am Jason Lavoie, and I'm also an environment artist. So these two gentlemen are responsible for um, all the art that you'll see uh, in Levels in Mirage, as well as the rest of the art team. Um, so Lucas, yeah. um, what are the environments that players will be fighting in? What kind of places will they be in? Uh, there's all sorts of different environments, uh, from desolate deserts to grand palaces to you know dusty bazaars, which uh, Jason will talk about yep. a little bit later. Um, yeah, there's it's all sorts of different environments uh, and you know a very wide variety of spaces. Mm -hmm. So are these just a bunch of maps that players can sort of pick and choose from and don't really have anything to do from one another? Are they are they connected somehow? Well, I mean, you can pick and choose from them, definitely, but uh, they, they are all interconnected. Right. Uh, so when we started working on Mirage, one thing that we really wanted to accomplish was to create this sense of this, you know, living world uh, and to create, you know, a, a universe, pretty much. We, we didn't just want to, you know, throw these random environments in a game and be, oh, ice level, fire level, stuff like that. Uh, we, we really wanted to make it feel like all of our environments were interconnected. Um, so that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be able to, you know, walk from one battleground to another, uh, but it does mean that there will be all of these, uh, you know, iconic landmarks within right. the environments. Yeah that ground them within the world that you're fighting in. Um, so, you, yeah, if you pay, you know, uh, uh, not even that much attention, <laughs> you will notice these things that, you know, uh, really place you within the context of the world. Yeah. Right. So when you're yeah. starting, you know, the spawn area of one map, you'll always look up and you'll see maybe a mountain in the distance there. And that yeah. mountain's going to appear again and again in yep. other maps, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... It must have been a pretty awesome experience uh, building this world from scratch, from like uh, from a blank canvas. So, what's that experience been like, Jason? Of, of taking you know taking these boxes and things, and <laughs> then just actually arting them up and making them look you know like the final product that they do today. Yeah, it's 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 been great, and it's been a very incredibly iterative process between artists and level designers here, um, as well as the full team. Uh, feedback is key. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, like you said, we, we generally start with uh, the kind of the, the gray bo box approach to things. Uh, we make sure that the level is fun to play before it even looks, you know, amazing. Uh, and again, that's all through feedback from, from our team. Uh, and it's just, again, very iterative. And then from there, we make sure that um, the level designers and artists work together to nail down the, the art theme of the level. Uh, so it could be um, in the government side of things where like verticality is, is achievable where right. whereas with bizarre uh, verticality may not be as <clears throat> as as achievable because of our architecture just things like that mm -hmm. uh, once that's nailed down we we kind of take over the process of, of arting things up uh, we we do a very broad strokes approach to things uh, we make sure that structurally everything is kind of set in place first uh, before we really go into the nitty-gritty of placing the arts and the effects pass. Right. And again, throughout this process, it's, it's constant feedback from the team, from the playtest, uh, constant feedback between level designers and artists. So it's, uh, it's, it's a very iterative process. So, yeah. so these are, you know, in this process of, of, of creating art and, and add, adding things and polishing things mm -hmm. up, there's so much detail going into the maps yes. of Mirage yes. that, uh, I mean, it must be overwhelming for you guys to do all that <laughs> work, um, but how do you ensure it's not overwhelming for players themselves who are, you know, when it comes down to it, people are trying to win battles exactly. and play a game and not just stare at pretty things yes. all day yes. long. So how, well, how do you ensure as an environment artist 
that there's not too much information in the worlds themselves. Yes, so obviously readability within Mirage is incredibly important because the players need to like react to everything so quickly. So uh, what we do is generally we make sure that the play spaces are as readable and as comfortable to fight in as possible. So a lot of things we do is uh, with materials, for example, um, we make sure that our materials kind of fade out to solid colors uh, to make sure that the characters themselves really pop out of the screen. Again, readability is super important. We also make sure that uh, the props aren't too cluttered within the play spaces. So a lot of times we will, we will put, kind of put props to the side while still kind of uh, doing environmental storytelling with them. We, we, want, we want to make sure that they don't get in the way of the player when they're right. fighting, which is yeah. really important. Yeah, especially we, do, we don't want to clutter up the combat too much because you know, we have so much going on as it is that, you know, if you're putting boxes all over the place, you know, you're just going to be getting caught on them, you know, sure. jumping on them. Yeah. Like, it's just not nearly as fun to, yeah. to play in. Yeah. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's been a very interesting process to learn, you know, how, yeah. how to do better. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, trying to make the spaces readable is, is it's a very difficult challenge because in a lot of games it's just like, okay, yeah, let's just, like, make it look as pretty as possible, right? Yeah. But when you're playing doing a multiplayer game, you have to make it as readable yes. as possible. Yes. And it's something that, you know, we we end up having to, like, reel back on yeah. a lot. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes we'll, we'll throw a bunch of stuff in. We're like, wow, look how great that looks. And mm-hmm. then we're like, all right, we got to reel this back. we got to push this to the side. Yeah. Like Jason was saying, it, it's such an iterative process, and feedback from other people is so important. Yeah. Because oftentimes, you know, you, you'll be working on something. you got your... your you're looking like this you got your goggles on and you're like wow this is awesome this is the best and then you play it and you're just like oh wow that's that's garbage you know like (laughs) you know i thought it looked great there but once you get players in there and all the abilities going off like you really have to you have to be very disciplined with it right gameplay Uh, first Mm -hmm. yeah speaking of play spaces Mm -hmm. uh we're going to be at PAX West yes. in uh, a couple of weeks from now, yes. like showing Mirage for the second time in public. Yeah, we're at yeah. PAX East back in April, so we're super excited about Very that. Exciting. It's going to be awesome. Yep. We're showing off two brand new maps that we've never shown to the public before. Uh, so one of them is a team objective map called Bazaar, mm-hmm. and the other one is a uh, point capture map called Sunken City. So, Lucas, what's Sunken City all about? Uh, so Sunken City is a city that has sunk, believe it or not, wow. uh, and uh, so it is a uh, the, this temple ruins that has been sitting at the bottom of this lake bed for you know about a thousand years or so, and the lake has dried up. So what is left are you know these this ruined temple set you know mm-hmm. at, and uh, the the dry lake bed. And, and you're fighting in it because that's what you do in Mirage. You fight in all these crazy spaces. Yep. 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 Uh, and you know while, while you're fighting in there, uh, going back to the connected world thing that we were talking about, like you will see all of these you know references to other levels within within the world. Uh, and yeah, I mean it's a, it's a, it's a very visually uh, stunning map. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. It's been so cool to work on uh, and to, to kind of breathe life into these yep. places. Um, you know, and even though it is this desolate, abandoned space, one thing that we really tried to do in Mirage um, that we didn't have as much of in Chivalry is to make sure that the environments felt alive, yeah. even if nothing was living in there. So yeah. there's this a lot more like subtle movement within the environment, mm-hmm. uh, and and you'll notice, especially if you've seen any of the gifts we've released recently, um, that you know you'll see these little things in the environment moving, and it does, and it really doesn't seem like a big deal. Until you, yeah, see it, you yeah. know, it, it, it's just, it, it really does make the spaces feel more like real spaces rather than these, you know, video game environments. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So Sunken City is very a different looking map as a desert to Bazaar, which is more of like markets and docks, right, yes. Jason? Yeah. So Bazaar is our third team objective map, and uh, we've been working on it for a while, so we're very excited to show it, especially at PAX. Uh, so with Bazaar, it's actually this city that is surrounding the palace walls of government. Um, so wherever you are in Bazaar, you can generally see government and the, the academy tower and just the palace walls in general. So uh, again, inter- interconnectivity, very important for us. Uh, so with the Teo Bazaar map, we start at the uh, base of this city, which is docks. So this city is kind of surrounded by water. So we start in uh, this dock area. And a lot of the a lot of things that you'll see is kind of like industrial themes, like cranes everywhere. You'll see a lot of market stalls, you'll see some fishing, just a whole bunch of stuff 
Uh, and the, the goal for this, is to, for this map is to kind of work your way into the city. So initially, you'll start uh, to kind of work your way in. You'll capture these two points that opens the gate. And from there, you're going to uh, have a pushable objective. Yeah. And while you're pushing this objective through this map, you're, you're actually inside a residential area now. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a lot of kind of these grouped buildings kind of smashed together and in really cool ways. You'll also get, again, the market stalls, the industrial themes. Um, and within the residential side of things, you'll actually get to see some really nice colors that pop out. That, that's, that is a very... Like it adds a very nice contrast to, to our environments. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Different color palette. Right. Yeah. To what yeah, yeah. We're working with out yeah. Yep. And, and you'll definitely notice the transition yes. from one space to another. Yes. That's one thing that we've really tried to push in the the team objective maps. It's like when you move from one objective to the next one, you are transitioning into a very different kind yes. of space. Mm -hmm. And you're always you're always working towards kind of the endpoint, which is that government city. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's it's very fun and I, I can't wait to see what people think yeah I can't wait to put people to play the new maps yeah, uh, as well as yeah. all the new gameplay abilities yes. that we've been oh, working yes. on all year for Mirage yeah. uh, that's really exciting uh, so one of which is projectile deflections yes. so uh, if anyone throws any kind of magic projectile at you which is basically what any character can do with mm. one of their abilities mm. You can deflect it right back at them and do damage to them, do damage to their teammates, uh, possibly even your own friends. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and it's always it's fun to see that happening in the distance too. When you're kind of running up to this combat zone, you just see deflections everywhere. It's yeah. crazy. It it's like so fireworks good. now. It and looks so good. And it, you can you can react to anything still, yeah. which is such a key part of all the combat in Mirage. So that's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. What else is new? Uh, there's a lot more work that has gone into the gore system yes. of uh, Mirage, yeah. which is something that you know is super important to us. Uh, you know, we want to make it feel really satisfying when you kill somebody because it's a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you're up, up close to somebody and you're going back and forth and, and you slice their head off, we want that to feel as satisfying as possible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, you know, it was in a, a relatively basic state at uh, PAX East, and for PAX West, we've, you know, polished it up a lot. Yeah. Uh, just a lot more crazy stuff will be happening, a lot more limbs flying off, you know, a yes. lot more yes. cartwheels in the air of, of spinning <laughs> dead bodies. Yep. It's just, it's so crazy what, what the abilities end up doing before, because in Chivalry, you know, you swing your sword and, you know, maybe you'll knock somebody, you know, a couple feet and they'll topple over in Mirage if you throw a gigantic boulder at somebody and it you know it takes out three people and they go flying <laughs> yeah, in every best, direction it's best. crazy yeah. it's so, so it's so, so fun and you'll know in Mirage when a fight's going on not just because all the screaming coming from there <laughs> but because a body part will come flinging at you be like all just right all that's where it's going yeah. on yeah. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what else? also the um, there's gonna be new abilities. Yeah. Be yeah. With. So so we we having our second tier abilities now. Yeah. So basically we're giving the players the, the ability to kind of choose their loadout, which is which is awesome because uh, you can be a torrent. And you can have like this crazy whirlwind ability that just kind of strikes everyone, or you can have that awesome boulder that's that's kind of yeah. clears people away. So. We're giving uh, a lot of a lot of choices to the players now with these second tier abilities. Yeah, um, and I just mentioned screaming before. So obviously, yeah. there's a scream button in Mirage. Um, a bunch of buttons. In terms of voicing yeah. in the game, we've now got for Pax West, all characters are being voiced. Yes. Um, so we will play with all of them, discover all their personalities, which is so much fun. That's yeah. the best. It is the best. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone, and uh, hopefully we'll see some of you at Pax West in Seattle. Yeah. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care.